Well, uh, Havoc's been around for about uh, seven years now. It started out in, uh, in Ireland, in Dublin, uh, and guys had a dream of uh, bringing real physics into next generation games. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've achieved that. You know, we've been pretty successful at that uh, with a lot of major, major titles. Havoc's been a great partner for us. Uh, they really bring in the technology that helps us really fine tune this destruction, being able to really bring the, the true physics of the environment together, uh, the ragdoll physics, everything that uh, Havoc brings to the table really helps uh, the John Woo gun battle and the excitement and the chaos and the mayhem. Intel enjoys a, a pretty strong working relationship with Havoc um, on the whole. The, the, the enabling work that we do with game developers d directly um, relies on middleware companies such as Havoc. So, you know, we're, we're, we've got engineers calling on Havoc, working very closely with them to get their, get their tools scaling on our architecture. We sell our products in different components, so we, we sell a physics product, a basic animation product, and this is the Havoc Behavior product. And it's really all about taking it to the next level where artists can actually start crafting these behaviors. Uh, in the past, uh, um, a lot of uh, brilliant artists and developers have worked together, but often the way they exchange ideas is you know, technically through email or with code. And we're trying to bring a tool to the middle of this that, that actually fills the gap between the traditional Max, Maya, and, and, uh, and XSI tools and code. And so this tool will let uh, artists pull in their animations, much in the way a video compositor might pull in a bunch of video and start working with it and come up with a behavior, in this case, an interactive behavior for a game that can actually go right into the game. All right, Jeff, enough, enough talking here. Let's go ahead and uh, all right, all right, take a look at right. the having behavior. So I know you guys got a demo here uh, for all of us to see, so let's go ahead and check sure, it out. Sure, yeah. So this is uh, one, of our, uh, one of our customers, Flagship Studios, let us use one of their characters. This is a guy called Fetid Hulk. And uh, Fetid Hulk is... Uh, sexy. Yeah, he's very <laughs> sexy. He's got a lot of personality. Yeah. Well, often when you make a uh, character animation, you, you start out with uh, individual animations that do something. This is what we call an idle state. Mm -hmm. This is what we call a walk forward state. And actually, we can kind of view that on a treadmill so you can always see what he's doing. Uh, right. Here's a walk backwards. State. But it's, it's combining these things all together in a way that is what probably most people are, are, are used to when they play a game mm -hmm. that, that a behavior is all about. This right. particular state we've got here blends all those things in a more meaningful way so we can actually have this guy running around, slowing down gradually, going backwards, going around corners, and even at times uh, maybe uh, doing a hit reaction or going into this kind of spit action because he's, he's the kind of character that likes to spit. Yeah. Apparently. So artists can actually uh, build these things up themselves mm -hmm. and when they're done give that result over to the programmers and the programmers can focus on another higher level above and beyond this kind of art. Now what other key, uh, key features does the Havoc Behavior School have over other SDKs? Well, one of the things I mean that we have is is a, a hierarchical finite state machine. It's a very technical term for yeah. <laughs> a, a way to actually group things in branches of motion or behavior that that you know isolate some of the complexity. So you're dealing with something, for example, like what does a spitting behavior really look like? Well, he starts, he loops, and he finishes, and you can craft that all inside of one window and then move on to another part of the behavior. So this hierarchy of these behaviors really helps the artist kind of zoom in on a particular aspect of the behavior when they're working.